How's it going everybody? My name is Andrew and I am here to do a review of the new Migos album Culture 3. This is my first video under the new direction of my channel being more music related and my first proper album review. Uh, if you couldn't tell I don't really have the best recording equipment. I'm recording through my phone's microphone right now. So it's not going to sound the best, and I apologize for that, and the editing won't be very good, but I just hope you guys can understand and show some support to the video, because I really do want to continue this as a career. But enough about all that. You guys came here for a review of the new Migos album. Uh, this album was supposed to drop in January of 2019, and then it got delayed. It was supposed to come out in January of 2020, and then it got delayed again. And it was supposed to come out in January of this year, 2021. But now it has officially released. And, well, the question that I'm probably going to put in the title of this video is, is it better than Culture 2? And how does it rank compared to the whole Culture trilogy? Because I'm not going to focus on those YRN projects from before. Because those are solid. But since this is Culture 3, and I assume it might be the last one, um, they haven't said that or anything. I'm just going to kind of guess since trilogies. But who knows? Um, going into this, before I go by a little bit of a track-by-track -track review, I'm just going to say that before going into this, I wasn't expecting much. Uh, I did not like Straightening at all. I really did not like that one. Um, the track with NBA Youngboy on it, I really liked it, and the only reason I'm calling it that is because prior to re-listening to the album, I forgot that that track existed, so I, I didn't remember its name or anything, I just knew it as the track with NBA Youngboy, and I thought that was a really solid one, uh, that track being Need It, and then right about an hour before the album released, uh, they dropped the song Avalanche, and that one was solid, and that was the first track on the album, so we'll just do a track-by-track -track review here, and I'll get my thoughts off, and then give an overall rating at the end. So the first track here is Avalanche, and that song kicks off almost immediately. We get Quavo uh, starting off, and he's flowing really well over to B, and um, as you could assume for it being the first track, of the project all three members get their shine and uh, yeah you know out of the three singles released this was probably my second favorite I I'm gonna say three singles released I don't I can't really remember if the other ones were released prior I probably should have researched that before but hey you know on the spot um, give no fucks was a song that was released prior to the album and it didn't make the cut and a lot of people didn't like that one I thought it was an alright song, but, you know, it was, a, it was a typical Migo song. I thought Travis Scott had a great performance in it. But either way, um, Avalanche, solid verses from all the members. It was an alright opening. Um, great way to start off, really. And then we got Have an Our Way featuring Drake. Honestly, the first time I played this through, and I'm recording this a few hours later, um, I didn't even really pick up that Drake had a feature. That could just be me not paying attention, but that the song, I just didn't, I couldn't remember anything from it. I had to re-listen to it a few times, and I still can't really say anything about it. It was pretty boring for a song that features, like, one of the most known rap groups in the world with maybe the most famous musician in the world. It it was underwhelming. Uh, Straighten it, hate it. I thought maybe there was something I was missing. When I saw people on Twitter, because everyone's comparing Culture 3 to Polo G's Hall of Fame album. And while getting ready to do this video, I was listening to Hall of Fame. And I do like Hall of Fame better, but that's a story for a different day. And honestly, Straighten I don't see why people were saying it was better than Rap Star, better than Gang Gang, anything off of that. I'm not going to keep doing comparisons to Hall of Fame, but just for the sake of what I was seeing on Twitter, I will. And, uh... Now, Straightening's terrible. I'm sorry. It might be my least favorite Migos song ever. That's all I gotta say. It's bad. It's repetitive. And for it being a single, I'd rather have Give No Fucks on here, honestly. Then we got Type Shit featuring Cardi B. It's fine. I don't 
just I, I don't just hate it because Cardi B's on it. That's a popular thing people do. No, Cardi's inclusion on this song is fine, but there's just not much to say about it. It's down. I'm gonna say this a lot, but it kind of just sounded like a standard Migo song. I didn't pick up much from it. It just sounded nice. It was one I could play in the background. Um, not one I'm gonna be returning too much. Excuse me. And then we get to Malibu featuring Polo G. This one. I love this one. Polo G had the standout verse of the project so far, um, up until this point, and it had my favorite hook on here. Just an overall great song. Like this was the first, maybe besides Avalanche, but since that was technically released before, so I'm not going to count it as an album cut. Amongst album cuts, this is the first one I've appreciated so far. Solid song. Uh, and again, love Polo G's part. Uh, then we get Birthday. It was catchy and it had a nice beat to it, you know. Uh, modern day, I have nothing to say about that one. Just kind of came in one ear, went out the other. And yes, I didn't just play them all once and then start recording. I played the songs I didn't have much to say in my notes the first time around. I gave another listen. But if I didn't have anything to say, I didn't have anything to say. In modern day, no. Vaccine, you knew a song like this would be coming just because of how many quarantine, COVID, pandemic, and vaccine bars we've been getting, and coronavirus bars. I don't know if I can say that on YouTube, but this video won't be monetized anyways. For a song that people were probably clowning online just because it's called Vaccine, it's a solid song and Offset has a great uh, verse on here. Picasso featuring Future is an alright song. Uh, Future... The last time I heard from him, I think was on that song Superstar from Slime Season or Slime Language 2. It's not Slime Season 2, a uh, Slime Language 2. And it's uh you know, <laughs> Future's part is is all right, but there's just it's an all right song. You know, that is what I have to say for a lot of this album. Just a bunch of all right songs. Uh then we get Roadrunner Again, just kind of comes off like a normal Migo song, but there wasn't anything that bad on it. But at the end of the song, Takeoff has a verse that really caught me off guard. Um, I, I really liked it. You know, um, Takeoff, throughout these next few songs, Takeoff really stood out to me. Um, and that was just because earlier in the early track list, no one came off as bad to me. But then near the end, more guys start coming off as good, and Take Off was the main one. Then after that, we got What You See featuring Justin Bieber. It was fine. It just didn't really feel like it needed to be here for a more melodic and slower cut. It's an all right song. I think this honestly sounds like something that could have made that DJ Khaled record and didn't need to be on Culture 3. Um... Let me get Jane. I did not like the hook on this one. It, it's kind of what I'd expect. I was hoping there wasn't a lot of bad hooks coming up to this, but this one, Takeoff's hook, I believe it was Takeoff on it. It wasn't very good. But overall, the song was fine. The verses were all right. I didn't mind any of that. It was just that chorus I didn't like. Um, and similar to that Justin Bieber song, Antisocial with Juice World, it doesn't feel like it needs to be there, but it's an all right song. You know, I'm not a big Juice World fan. Um, I just never really caught on to him, not to be disrespectful to, or anything, but I just never really caught on to him. But I really enjoyed his performance here. I, every time he, I believe he only did the hook in this song. Every time he came on, I liked it, so that I'm okay with it. Oh, uh, why not? The only thing I gotta say about this song is that I had a great takeoff verse. Mahomes, I didn't feel the best about when I heard the beat. And then Quavo's melodic parts I didn't care for, but then Take Off and Offset destroyed it, so, you know, kind of what we'd expect. Handle My Business was an overall solid track, but nothing too special. Uh, Time For Me, I really liked that one. It was a more laid back and smooth cut. Uh, Take Off with another great verse. Light It Up featuring Pop Smoke was kind of just a remix of Dior. It's not, but it sounds the exact same. Pop Smoke's vocal sounds super weird on this one. Um, overall, a nice song, but the Migos didn't need to be on it. And then in the, the final track, uh, Need It featuring NBA Youngboy is great. Youngboy does so good on songs where he trades bars with people. And a great closer to it, I think of this more as a Youngboy song just because he was my favorite part. So 
with all that being said, we can get to my overall thoughts about it. You know, compared to Culture 2, this is a big improvement. I didn't like Culture 2 like a lot of main critics were. I know, I believe the album still sold well, but, and it had hits. The one thing I'll give Culture 2 and Culture 1, but over Culture 3, is that Culture 2, when it came out, you could hear songs, like, that were gonna be hits right away. I don't, I don't know how many of these songs, like, how many of these album cuts are gonna be getting millions of views right away and have the kind of impact that a Stir Fry, that a Bad and Bougie, that a Narcos did. Um, and considering it's 19 tracks long, I came away with nine highlights, one strong low light, and then the other nine songs were just fine. They were okay. There was they weren't terrible. Uh, my highlights would be Avalanche, Malibu, Birthday, Vaccine, Roadrunner, Antisocial, Why Not, Time for Me, and Need It. And the low light is straightening because that song's trash. So overall, I would give this a low seven out of ten. If you're wondering how that compares to my ratings of the first two Culture albums, basically, I think Culture 1 is like a high 7 out of 10. In Culture 2, I would give like a 4. I really didn't like that one, especially because it was like 24 tracks long with a lot of bad on it. And this was 19 tracks long with a lot of okay on it. You know, I had, a, as you just saw, I had a good amount of songs I thought were fine and only a few that were bad. Only one that was terrible. If you like these kind of reviews, please let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, put turn on the notification bell because I'll be doing more videos like this in the future. And yeah, thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next video.